put your word in our heart that we might utter them from our lips, that whatever we say will be accepted in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Those of you who got up this morning in spite of the rain and came out, I want to call your attention to the 15th chapter of the Gospel of Luke. I'm going to read verses 11 through 32, and because you are familiar with that, I'm going to read it kind of quickly so we can get to the message. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me a, the portion of good that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a famine, in, a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave to unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many high servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy higher servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion on him and fell on his neck and kissed him, and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto the father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said unto the servant, Bring forth the fattest, bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. And for this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. Now his eldest son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard the music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked, What this thing mean, what these things meant? And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father has killed the fatted calf, because he had received in him safe and sound. And he was angry, and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answered, said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgress I at any time thy commandments, and yet Thou never gave me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which has devoured thy living with harlots, thou killest for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was me that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead, and is now alive, and was lost, and is now found. That's the word of the Lord. I want to preach this morning on, from the subject, the prodigal's father. Uh, the prodigal's father. Not the prodigal father, but the father of the prodigal. That's what I want to talk about this morning. I preach from that text and have used many topics in trying to make that text live. But I don't ever remember 
than finding what a prodigal was during those times of preaching. But this time, I, I decided that I would just do a little bit more work and try to get you to understand very simply what a prodigal is. First of all, a prodigal is a noun. And it is one who spends money or resources freely and recklessly and wastefully and extravagantly. In other words, if you spend your money recklessly, wastefully, and extravagantly, then you are defined as a prodigal. So, the prodigal's father is my most favorite father in the Bible. Yeah, he, he must be the idea earthly father because he was chosen by Jesus to illustrate the heavenly father. Yeah, he, he, he didn't choose Abraham even though he was the father of, of the faithful. He didn't choose David even though he was a man after God's own heart. He, he didn't choose Joshua even though he declared as for me in my house we will serve the Lord. No, he chose the prodigal's father to show what the heavenly father was like. The younger son was prodigal in choosing the pleasures of sin. Man, I told you, a prodigal is one who spends his money and resources wastefully and, and recklessly. And so this man or this young boy was a prodigal because he chose the pleasures of sin as opposed to the rules of his daddy's house. The older son was prodigal because he chose pride and selfishness. Can you imagine your brother was lost, your brother was out there in the world, your brother was dead and now he has come alive spiritually again and has come back home and all you can say is, you never had a party for me. And isn't it strange that, that, that we got some prodigals right in the church today? I, I dare you recognize them for their work. I, I've been working for 50 and 60 years. I dare you give them a plaque. I, nobody ever gave me a plaque. I, I, I dare you give them a certificate. I, I've been here doing and working and, and you never gave me a certificate. So here the older son was a product of because of pride and selfishness. And, and you do know that pride goes before fall. Can you get a witness? Yeah, yeah. But because the father was, was what he was, the prodigals became what they should be. I need you to get that, so let me repeat that. Because the father was what he should have been, the two sons became what they should have been. Huh? Yeah, in other words, the younger son was restored because the father was forgiven. And the older son became less selfish and filled with pride because the father assured him that everything that I have belonged to you so you have no reason to be jealous of your son. The younger son came home and the older son was no longer just considering himself. And, and brothers and sisters, one of the most dangerous things you can do is to just think about yourself and nobody else. I, I remember telling you once that the late Elijah Muhammad didn't say a whole lot that I repeat, but there is one thing he said, and I think it's worth repeating, and he said that you know that you have been born again, you know that you're saved, you know that you love your brother when you want for your brother what you want for yourself. And isn't it saying how we want to drive Cadillacs, but we are satisfied that our brother is catching the bus? 
in, in, in this saying that we want the best of things for ourselves, but yet we don't want anything for anybody else. Can you imagine a man who sits in the, in the, in the capital, a man who is a senator or a congressman of the United States? They got some of the best benefits in the world. I'm talking about health coverage, and yet they don't want health coverage for people who cannot afford to pay for their health coverage. Brothers and sisters, that is a selfish attitude, and the Bible declares that you're nothing but a prodigal. Amen. Let's look at what made the prodigal's father worthy to be chosen by Jesus to illustrate the heavenly father. You gotta remember now, Jesus didn't just do stuff haphazardly. He, he had a reason for doing it. So what was it about this prodigal father? What was it about the prodigal son's daddy that made him worthy to be chosen to illustrate our heavenly father? Well, the prodigal father, first of all, was an approachable father. Say approachable. Yeah, yeah, the text would seem to give some, some family history because it implies that the mother of these boys must have been dead because she was not mentioned anywhere in the text. It, it, it starts off by talking about, you know, a, a certain man or a father rather than talking about, you know, the mother. So we, it, we have to be implied that, that the mother was not alive. The text also indicates wealth because the father had servants. And anybody who, who, who was wealthy could afford servants. And those who were not wealthy could not afford servants. But the Bible said that this man had servants. Because you remember now that when the older boy heard the music and the dancing, he came and asked the servant, what meaning all of this? So, so, so the text seemed to give some family history. The younger son had dreams of the far country. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know whether he had traveled or not, or whether some of his friends told him, man, when, but when you get to Newark, you, you got to go by this place and that place, because they be partying over there, and they be having a good time, and if you're looking to find the right kind of women, this is where you want to go. I, I don't know what, what, what kind of information he had, but I know that he had a desire for the far country. Verse 12 says, the younger son said to his father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And the Bible says that he divided unto them his living. Now I need you to understand that what the father owned, he didn't have to give to either one of them. Huh? Yeah, yeah, because it was his. Notice what it said. He divided unto them his living. The daddy owned everything. And, and the sons uh, could get what was coming to them upon the death of the father. Can you get a witness? But the boy went and said, give me the portion of good that falls to me. I know I'm asking too early because you are still here and I'm not going to try to wish you were dead, but just go ahead and divide it and give it to me. And what the boy was really saying is, I, I want you to give me my freedom. Right. I, I'm tired of obeying your rules. I'm tired of coming home when you tell me to come home. I'm tired of going to bed on your clock. So what I want you to do is to give me my freedom and all the substance that goes along with being free. Verse 13 says, and, and, not, and, and, and not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And watch what comes after far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. Now, 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 when you look at that, theologians tie both of those, you know, uh, uh, phrases together, you know, in, in other words, he gathered all his stuff together, took his journey into a far country, and now wasted his suffering with riotous living. Riotous living uh, somehow was tied to the far country. And so what, what the text is trying to tell us here, anytime you leave the church, you're going to a far country. Anytime you walk away from God, you're going to a far country. Anytime you get away from the laws and rules that your parents brought you up under, you are going to a 
country. And so he said, he wasted. That there's that word wasted, prodigal. <laughs> huh? His substance with riotous living. Let, let you go. Listen, I imagine he was spending money. You know, when you got money, you got friends. Hmm? Yeah, always somebody want to hang around and hang on to you. Y'all remember this boy from uh, the Philadelphia 76ers? Allen Iverson? He said he had to bring his posse with him from Virginia. Had to bring his boys. Huh? And they helped him spend all of his money. Y'all remember MC Hammer? Had to bring his posse with him. Huh? Wasted his substance with riotous living. Now, so, so some might have, have, have slipped off in the night and just run away. Some might have even asked another to go and intercede. In other words, some of y'all would have said, well, hey, go ask my dad if, if he give me what's mine so I can go away into a far country. But this son felt free to come to his daddy. Why? Because his daddy was approachable. And I think it's important as fathers that we be approachable. Our sons and daughters ought to feel free coming and talking to us. Can I get a witness? Yeah, you ought not be so, so stiff and so stern that your children don't feel comfortable coming talking to you. In other words, you ought to be approachable. And let me tell you something. I find some folk in this world that they are not approachable. Say amen, somebody. Just the way they look at you will hurt your feelings. Just the way they look at you make you go off, sit down somewhere, and cry. Just the way they look at you, wish you had never seen them that day. But this father was approachable. And notice now, his far country was riotous living. In other words, he dreamed of a great task, but all he found was great temptation. Have you ever left home in the morning and you had a great task on your mind, but all you found when you went out was great temptation? And I think I ought to caution all of us fathers that there's a lot out there that can tempt you to stray away from being the kind of father you want to be. There are some folks who wake up in the morning and their only desire is to get you into riotous living. Did you know that? He dreamt of, of adventure, but all he found was agony. Because the Bible said that boy had, had spent all that he had. Mm, everything gone. Went to the spring ends and, and, and nobody could help him. And isn't it strange how you spend your money on your friends, but when you are dying, your friends don't want to help you in return. Yeah. God saved me from folk who's always broke. Oh, I didn't know that was going to rhyme. <laughs> he, he, he dreamed of, of prestige, but all he found was poverty. Huh? The Bible said he had spent all. Amen. And, 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 and so he, he dreamt of happiness, but all he found was himself feeding the swine. Because the Bible said that he went and connected himself to a man that lived in that area. And it tells you he wasn't a Jew because he owned swine. And, and, and all he would do was just give him a job feeding the swine. And to a Jew, that was a slap in the face. Say amen to my. Yeah, to our Muslim brother, that would be a slap in the face. But this, but his, but his father was approachable, even from the pig pen. Look what he said. He said, I will arrive and go to my father. Can, can you imagine that this boy in a pig pen, hungry, would have eaten the husk that the swine did eat, but he had his dad on his mind. Hmm? That kind of reminds me of a song, and I'm going to rush through that song, uh, but it, the, the title of the song is Please Come and Get Me, Mr. Jones. It's a country song, so most of y'all don't know it, because y'all don't listen to, Christ, uh, to country music. And But what happened was this boy who was adopted by Mr. Jones, and every time he got in trouble, Mr. Jones came to get him out. Yeah. Uh, and he'd go to say, please come and get me, Mr. Jones. Okay? But one day when he was, got in trouble, was in jail, he called and there was no answer. 
on Mr. Jones and so on. Why? Because Mr. Jones had died. And he didn't have nobody to come to his rescue. But here this boy, after spending all that he had, he knew that his dad was still approachable. So the first point is that, that, that he was chosen to illustrate what God is like because he was approachable. The prodigal's father was worthy to illustrate the heavenly father secondly because in the mind of the son, his father was associated with him. Watch this now. Verse 8 says, I will arise and go to my father and say unto him, Father, I have, my brother, verse 18, I have sinned against heaven before thee. Can you imagine this boy liking his dad with an association with him? Huh? Yeah, it, 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 is, it is nonsense that manhood calls for coldness. I don't know what it is about us. We think in order to be a man, we got to be cold, heartless, unapproachable. But a father ought to be able to kiss his sons and daughters and still be men. Say amen to somebody. Yeah, a, a, a father ought to be able to cry and still be men. When my, when my babies were born, I cried. Blood of my blood, bone of my bone. Can I get a witness? Yeah, when, when my daughters and my sons got married, I cried. Because I was happy for them. And, and when I, after I got through crying, I walked away the same man that I was before I cried. Say amen, somebody. Yeah, it, it's all right to, to, to be show affection and, and still be manly. Me and we need to learn to be more affectionate with our family. That this father had what I call a look of love. Huh? In other words, the son had left. The son had wasted his substance. But then the father had a look of love because the father had been watching for the return of his son. Can you imagine that you have spent my money wasting it on riotous living and I'm sitting in the window every day waiting on him to come back home. Uh -huh. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. He, he ran out to me. That's what it said. He saw him what? A fall and ran out to meet him. Yeah. He, he might have been out of breath, but he wasn't out of love. Uh -huh. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Yeah, according to Spurgeon, Spurgeon said the daddy might have been out of breath, but he wasn't out of love. Yeah. Huh? And brothers and sisters, don't you ever let your children be so bad that, that, that you can't love them still. That steal your child, that, that steal your son, that steal your daughter. The only thing that the father was concerned with was that his son who was lost is not found. His son who was dead is not alive. It, it didn't matter that, that he had been away. As uh, a matter of fact, the dad had never mentioned the fact that he was away. The dad had never asked him, what did you do with my money? The dad had never asked him, boy, what have you been doing all this time that you've been gone? Didn't matter that he smelled like swine. And most of y'all don't even know what that smelled like because you never had to slop hogs. There's no way you can slap hogs and not come away smelling like the hog did. But it didn't bother this daddy that his son smelled like the swine. It didn't matter that he was ragged. It didn't matter that his pockets were empty. It didn't matter that he was barefooted. It didn't matter that he had already pawned the ring of sonship. But, but the daddy just saw him and, and ran out to meet him. All that matter was his son was returning home. So then, that brings me to the third point, I'm going to close. The prodigal's father was chosen by Jesus to illustrate the heavenly father because he was a father who was assuring to both sons. Let me tell you something. You don't have to mistreat one child 
in order to love the other child. Huh? I, I hear some of y'all talking about, oh, that's my favorite. All your children ought to be your favorite. Huh? This boy, this dad was assuring to both children. Look what, the, look what he said over here for the young boy. He said to the servant, bring forth the best robe. Huh? And put it on him. And put a ring on his finger. And shoes on his feet. Now, the ring restored him to a position of authority. Did anybody know anything about the Catholic Church? And any time they met the Pope, they kissed his ring. Because that ring was a, 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 a sign of authority. It talked about position, huh? The son could not represent the father and his kingdom unless he had a ring on his finger. So, so, so by putting the ring on him, he was saying to his son, now, now, now son, I, I'm, I'm restoring authority to you. And so you have the authority to tell my servants what to do. You have the authority to act on my behalf because I put a ring of sonship. But then, the shoes that he gave him to put shoes on his feet. And what those shoes did was immediately restored him above a servant. Because in those days, servants were barefoot. They didn't have shoes. Can't get a witness. And if you had seen me up until about the ninth grade, you would have thought I was a servant. Because I never had shoes on my feet. My mom would buy me shoes and I'd take them off and be winter time. And I'd be out there playing barefooted. And they would call my mom and say, your boy out here with no shirt on and no shoes and it's winter time. Well, I either, you know, could have worn the shirt and the shoes, got them messed up, got a whooping when I got home, but tied up the only pair of shoes I was going to get that year, or I could go there for it. But, but this boy was given shoes that show that he had been elevated above servanthood. And so then he, he told him, put it on the boy. Then go and kill the fatted cat. Now notice, it said the fatted Cat. That meant that they had taken this cat out of the field, put it in a stall or containment by itself, and fed it certain types of food in order to clean it out and fatten it. So that they make sure he got the best meat. Say amen or not. Now many of y'all don't know about that, but y'all do know about this. Well, when you got ready to kill a chicken, mama would go out and tell you, catch that chicken and put him in the chicken coop so we can clean it out. And they'd feed him corn and other stuff, you know, mash that would clean him out so that when you kill that chicken, you make sure you had some good meat because the chicken on the yard would eat grass and rocks and glass and, and everything else. And if you don't believe it, just cut the gizzard open and look inside that gizzard, they'll tell you everything that the chicken had eaten. So the man said, go and kill the fatted cat. We're going to have a pot. And we're going to make better. That's the way he assured the younger son. Look at how he assured the older son. And he said to the older son in verse 31, Son, thou art ever with me. And all that I have belongs to you. In other words, he said, it's that. Hmm? The, the prodigal's father reminds me so much of my heavenly father. How is that, Reverend? Well, first of all, our Heavenly Father is approaching. Can you get a witness? It doesn't matter who you are, where you've been, and what you've done. You can come to God. And he said, whosoever come unto me, I will in no wise cast him out. All you got to do is say, I will follow. Can you get a witness? Who are in heaven? So our Heavenly Father is approachable. But then our Heavenly Father is associated with heaven. Because Jesus said, when you pray, Pray our Father, which art in heaven. And then Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. 
And you know where you went to prepare that place? You went back to him in order to prepare that place. But being our Heavenly Father is affectionate because he loves us no matter what. For I heard the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Just like you can. 